Hi, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. In this video, we're going to see how to remove a background around hair. This video is for versions of Photoshop Elements 11 and newer because we're going to use a feature called Edge Detection. Edge Detection wasn't added to Elements until version 11. A while back, I received an email from Joe. He was wondering how he could remove his dog Piper from one photo and transfer her to another photo. This is the photo he sent. Specifically, he was wondering how to get the hair detail, which before edge detection was nearly impossible to do with elements. So let's go over to elements and get started. I have the photo of Piper that Joe sent me open in elements. I'm using Photoshop Elements 12 for this video. I'm going to zoom up by pressing the command key and the space bar on a Mac, or it would be the control key and the space bar on a PC. When I do, my cursor changes to the Zoom tool. I'll continue holding down those keys as I click and drag around Piper. Now you can let go of the Command or Control keys and the space bar. Next I'll make our initial selection of Piper. To do that, I'm going to go over to the Toolbox and click on the Quick Selection tool to make it active. It's located in the bottom right of the Select section of the toolbox, but it shares that spot with two other tools, the Selection Brush and the Magic Wand. So you might see one of those there instead. I see I have the Magic Wand in that spot right now. Whichever tool is there, go ahead and click on it, and then if you need to, you can go down to the Tool Options and make the Quick Selection tool active by clicking on it down there. I'm going to move my cursor into the Live Work area, it's pretty small, so you can use the left and right bracket keys to resize it. The left bracket key will make it smaller each time you press it, and the right bracket key makes it larger. I want to make mine larger, so I'll press the right bracket key a few times. Now I'm going to click and drag to start my selection. By default, after you start selecting with the Quick Selection tool, it goes into Add Mode. That means if you let go of the mouse button, which I just did, you can just start to click and drag again to continue adding to your selection. And I'm going to make my cursor a little smaller to select her leg here, so I'll press the left bracket key a few times and then click and drag again to get that selected. If something gets included in your selection that you don't want, like part of the background, you can easily subtract that part of the selection by holding down the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC. I'll move my cursor over onto this black area of her body so we can see it better. And I'm going to press down the Option key on a Mac, or it would be the Alt key on a PC. In the center of my cursor it changes to a minus sign from a plus sign and that indicates whatever I click and drag on will be subtracted from my selection. I'm going to take some of this background out of here. And try to get all this out of here. And now I'll let go of the Option or Alt key and you can see I get the plus sign again so now I can just start clicking and dragging to add more to the selection which I need to do. I just want to refine my selection a little bit more so I'm going to go back and add some of these areas that got missed. Maybe I can get a little more of this. And I'm going to subtract out some from right here. I see I have some background in there. I'm just fine-tuning my selection at this point. Not being too fussy around these stray hairs. Okay, I think this is good enough. Now I'll go up to the Select menu and choose Refine Edge. The Refine Edge dialog box appears. This is where we can make our selection more accurate. The first thing I'm going to do is click on this thumbnail next to View. 
and a drop-down menu appears giving you different options for how to view your selection. I usually start with either on black or on white, so I'm going to click on black. Now I can see what my current selection would look like on a black background, and now I'll click on white to see how that looks. The reason I'm doing this is I want to kind of see which background will give me a better idea of what's actually being selected since most of the detail that I want to capture by using Refine Edge is the black part around her tail and her hind leg. I'm going to go with this on white. So I'll double click on the on white option to close the menu and choose that option. Next I'm going to use the radius slider to see what effect it has on my selection. The radius tells elements how far from the selection edge to look for detail to add to the selection. I'm going to crank it all the way up to uh, 40 something. And now we get some really nice detail of her fur, especially around the tail. But we're also picking up some of the original background, which we don't want. You can really see it along the top of her back. We can actually get a visual of how far that radius goes if we click on the Show Radius box. When I do, it shows us how far on both sides of our selection 44.4 pixels in this case goes. This is a pretty good size radius. The problem with this photo is when it goes too far beyond the edges of our dog, it's interpreting parts of the photo's background as detail to be included in our selection. To prevent that from happening, you can make the radius amount less. I'm going to bring the radius down to 6 pixels. Now when I turn off Show Radius by clicking on it, we have much less background being included. The bad part is that we lost all of the nice detail around her tail and rear leg, but luckily there's a way to get that back. Instead of having elements try to find detail the same distance from the entire edge of our selection, we can manually add radius to just the areas that we want to get that detail. The way we do that is with a tool that's in the Refine Edge dialog box called the Refine Radius tool. It's this icon that looks like a brush. If it's not active, you can click on it to make it active. It's hard to remember where all those stray hairs are, so I'm going to click on the View thumbnail again. Notice that the bottom option is Reveal Layer. When I click on that, it reveals the whole layer and it ignores my selection. By temporarily going into this view, we can click to see where some of those stray hairs are. Look at the end of these view options. They all have a letter after them. Those are the keyboard shortcuts for those views. Reveal Layer is R and On White is W. I'm going to use those keyboard shortcuts to switch between those two views. I'll click R when I want to see exactly where the stray hairs are and I'll click W so I can see how my current selection looks on a white background. I see that there's a lot of fine detail at the bottom of her tail so I'll press W and with the Refine Radius tool I'll brush over that area Now when I click Show Radius, it shows that the radius has been expanded in the tail area where I brushed. I'll click off of Show Radius again. Let's press R again and see where else we want to expand the radius to look for. There's that area between her tail and hind leg that we can try to get. So I'll press W to switch back to view our selection on white and then brush over that area. and a lot of that is added to our selection. Now let's press R again and look for other detail. There's that little bit of black hair right behind her leg. Let's press W and see if we have it yet. Nope, we have some of it, but let's brush over that to see if we can get some more. There we go. And you can just continue on like that, checking for detail to try and include with the Refine Radius tool. There's some more detail under here that I'm going to try to get. It's 
So let's see, we'll try to get this ear, this hair by her ear coming down a little better. That looks good, and on top of her head. Around here, let's see, what do we have? Okay, back by her rear ear, we can add a little more. And let's look again. Okay, there's a little more by her tail. Get that in there. And that looks pretty good. After you're done getting a good selection of the detail, I want to switch to yet another view option. This is called black and white. The keyboard shortcut is K. Let's press K. And you can see that in the view menu here. What this view shows is a very accurate representation of our selection. It represents it as a black and white mask. The white areas represent the areas of our photo that our current selection will show. The areas that are black are the areas of our photo that will be hidden or masked. And any areas that are gray represent areas that our selection will partially show us. The reason I like to go into this view is because I want to add a slight amount of feather to the selection. A feather amount will blur the edges of the selection and that helps us to blend the subject into its new photo and look more natural. To add a feather, you drag the feather slider towards the right. And if I drag the slider too far to the right, the edges become way too blurry and we would lose all detail on those edges. For this photo, I'm going to give it just a slight blur of somewhere between 1 and 2. The amount you choose depends on the size and resolution of the photo. Now let's switch back to our white background by pressing W. You probably noticed how greenish blue Piper looks. That's being caused by the color of the swimming pool reflecting onto her. It looks natural for the original photo she was in, but it won't look so good in her new photo. The Refine Edge dialog box actually has a feature to help with this called Decontaminate Colors. Let's try it and see what happens. First, I'll click on the box to check it. And there's a slider below the box that lets you add or subtract the amount or the intensity. The default is 50%. I didn't notice any change in the color, so let's crank it up to 100%. That helps a very little, but that color is so strong that it doesn't help nearly enough. Let's uncheck the box and we'll deal with it in a different way. The last thing I'm going to do in this dialog box is choose how to output the final selection. If you click on the Output To field, you can choose from the options in the pop-up menu. I'm going to choose New Layer with Layer Mask. Then I'll click OK to close the box and accept the changes and it does exactly what we asked it to do. It added a new layer with a layer mask in the layers panel. Our selection is gone because it's been converted to a layer mask. We need to get rid of the greenish blue color cast. The first thing I'm going to do is go up to the enhance menu and choose adjust color, remove color cast, but it's grayed out. That's because we have the layer mask active in the layers panel. You can tell that because it has this blue border around it. So I'll click on the layer thumbnail to make it active. Now the blue border is around that and I'm able to go up and choose Remove Color Cast. The Remove Color Cast dialog box appears and it tells us exactly what to do to remove a color cast. It says click on a part of the image that should be either gray, white, or black. That should be pretty easy since Piper's basically a black and white dog. I'll click on this back leg where it has a strong color cast. That got rid of the bluish green color cast, but now she has a reddish color cast. So I'll click again on the red area up by her neck. Now we just go back to the greenish blue. Remove color cast is easy to use and usually does a really good job, but it's not working for this photo, so let's try another approach. I'm going to cancel out of this. We'll go back up to Enhance Adjust Color and this time click on Adjust Hue Saturation. We could just drag the saturation slider towards the left to desaturate the whole photo, but that dulls down the color in her eyes, nose, and paws. Let's try to just target the bluish green. 
I'll move the saturation slider back to zero. When you click on the field at the top where it says Master, a pop-up menu appears where you can choose specific colors. I'll choose greens since there isn't an aqua choice. Let's slide the saturation slider all the way over to the left so it's at minus 100%. That removed a good amount of the color cast. Now it looks like we have some blue to deal with, so I'll switch to blues and move the saturation slider to minus 100%. It doesn't appear to have any effect. That tells us that Elements doesn't see that as blue. Well, let's try Cyan. There we go, that got rid of it. Now it looks like there's a few small areas that are contaminated with green and yellow. We already did all we could with green, so let's try yellows. I'll move the saturation slider to the left and voila, our color cast is gone. So we can click OK to close the dialog box and commit to our changes. Now all we have to do is move Piper into our new photo and that'll be the second part of this video series. So I hope you got a basic understanding of how to bring out some of that finer detail. We weren't able to get all of it, and you usually can't, but it's by far better than any other options we had previously in Elements to get that kind of fine detail with the selection. So until next time, this is Rick saying take care.